Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This is a short presentation showing how one can determine the closed loop bandwidth of an amplifier built around an operational amplifier. In a previous electrobit, in fact, electrobit number two, it was shown that in general you can describe a amplifier based on operational amplifier as a feedback system but you do need to include an extra element this is the G element. This G element describes the relationship between the actual input and the input to the amplifier when there is no feedback. It was also shown that the A closed loop expression uh, is described by uh, this equation here and these two equations uh, number two and number two number one and number two are for uh, two cases depending on the polarity of the amplifier here the polarity is positive here the polarity is negative of course the total loop gain is negative that is we are talking about negative feedback but as it turns out the polarity of the amplifier, whether it's positive or negative, will determine whether the gain in closed loop will be positive or negative, and hence this is this uh, added uh, factor here. This is a sign of A open loop. Now, for the case that beta A is much larger than 1, then uh, beta A larger than 1, uh, 1 can be neglected. We get that the a open loop is divided out and in fact the gain will be g over beta. In the case of beta a smaller than 1 then the gain will be g a open loop because uh, when beta a is smaller than 1 then um, it is uh, neglected here and we get just uh, g over g times a open loop if I remember. For the non-inverting amplifier, we do not need to introduce G because G is actually equal to 1. So consequently, the gain for beta A larger than 1 is just 1 over beta. And uh, for be the area where beta A is smaller than 1, then it goes back to A open loop, as one would expect, because when uh, beta is very small, there is in fact no feedback, and then, of course, the gain will be just um, a open loop. Okay, let's see now how we can get the closed loop response, and that is the bandwidth of the amplifier in closed loop. We start off by drawing the a open loop transfer function. We assume, of course, that this is known either graphically or as an a expression shown here, in which case we have a gain plus a pole at f sub 0. In this case, this, this private case, it's 10 hertz. Next, we draw 1 over beta. It is drawn here for the private case of 20 dB, assuming that in, in this particular case, beta is frequency independent. doesn't have to be, but for simplicity, we'll start with that. So, we have now uh, a description of 1 over beta in a graphical form. Now, looking at the expression of A open loop in dB, which is 20 log A open loop, and 1 over beta in dB, which is the scale here, 20 log 1 over beta, we recognize that this is actually 20 log of beta A, that is, the dB value of beta A, which means that if we subtract from A open loop, subtract 1 over beta in dB, we end up with a difference here, which is in fact beta A in dB. So in this case, because A open loop is larger than 1 over beta, the difference is positive, which means that beta A is larger than 1. On the other hand, if we look 
in this region here, a open loop is smaller than 1 over beta. So when we subtract 1 over beta from a open loop in db, we'll end up with a number which is negative. And this, of course, implies that uh, beta a is smaller than 1. So this region here is where beta a is larger than 1. And this region here is when beta a is smaller than 1. Now we have seen before that, or let's go to one more point. Now we have seen before that the expression for the closed loop response of the amplifier is this equation here. And when beta a is much larger than 1, then the expression is 1 over beta. And therefore, when beta a is larger than 1, this is this region here, a closed loop is 1 over beta. On the other hand, when beta a is smaller than 1, the expression for a closed loop is a open loop by itself, which is this case here, because here we are in the case of beta a smaller than 1. So we can conclude, therefore, that in this particular case, after drawing 1 over beta, the a closed loop will be equal to 1 over beta as long as beta a is larger than 1, and then it switches to a open loop for the region that beta a is smaller than 1. Very simple. Now we can use this presentation in order to get um, information about the breakpoint, starting with the breakpoint here, which we can find from the breakpoint here and the gain. And the gain here is 100 dB, so this is 10 to the fifth. This is 10 hertz, so we have to multiply it by 10 to the fifth, and we end up with 1 megahertz. Now, the gain here. Now the gain here is 20 dB for this private case, so this is a factor of 10, so the breakpoint will be 1 MHz divided by 10, which is 100 kHz. So this is really very simple. By uh, this graphical representation, we can end up with the actually a closed loop magnitude and as well as the uh, 3 dB uh, bandwidth point. Now what happens with the inverting amplifier? In this case, we have to invoke G. For the original or classical expression of the closed loop, we can do the same thing. Starting with the open loop, drawing one of the beta, and getting this violet line for this part here, for the two cases of beta A larger than 1 and beta A smaller than 1. Now what do we do with the G? Well, we have to find out what is G. G is the relationship between the input and the input to the amplifier when V out is 0, and so this is a voltage divider, uh, RF over RF plus R in, which is of course smaller than 1. This is why it's below the 0 dB line. And then what we have to do, we have to shift the 1 over B by the G value, and then for this part here, beta A is smaller than 1, to shift the A open loop by the G value, and by this we'll get the A closed loop. So this is really very simple. We can get now the complete A closed loop of the system. So this brings me to the end of this webinar. Thank you very much for your attention.